mercifully with thy help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby thou hast given us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. After telling a parable to the crowd at Jericho, Jesus went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had been saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. The Lord be with you. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ,
only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, hast overcome death and opened unto us the gate of everlasting life, we humbly beseech thee that, as by thy special grace preventing us, thou dost put our mind in good desire, so by thy continual help we may bring the same to good effect. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth we and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen, as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled my beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Here endeth the lesson. Let us read the appointed selection of the Psalter in unison. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. And my eye is consumed for very heaviness. Yea, my soul and my body. For my life is waxen old with heaviness and my years with mourning. My strength faileth because of mine iniquity, and my bones are consumed. I became a reproach among all mine enemies, but especially among my neighbors. And they of mine acquaintance were afraid of me, and they that did see me without conveyed themselves from me. I am clean forgotten as a dead man out of mind. I am become like a broken vessel. For I have heard the blasphemy of the multitude, and fear is on every side, while they conspire together against me and take their counsel to take away my life. But my hope hath been in thee, O Lord, I have said, Thou art my God. My times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies, and from them that persecute me. Show thy servant the light of thy countenance, and save me for thy mercy's sake. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself, and became obedient 
to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Here endeth the epistle.
Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders of the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people. And here I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither is Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, this man has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then the elders all shouted out together, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas for us! Barabbas was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! A third time Pilate said to them, Why, what evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But the elders kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that Jesus should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. Pilate released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led Jesus away, they seized the man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people who followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the womb that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with Jesus. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, he saved others, let him save himself. If he is the Messiah of God, the chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over Jesus that read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding Jesus and saying, I know you're not the Messiah. Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. While the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two, then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for the spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home 
beating their breasts. But all Jesus' acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. For some of you who may have come expecting a long and stirring sermon this morning, I have to disappoint you because that was the sermon. On this day, as we reenact the events of Holy Week, visually reenact them, reutter the words, that is what we are to reflect on. And Keep in our minds through all this coming week as we observe another reenactment on Maundy Thursday and on Good Friday, the final reenactment of the crucifixion itself, so that on Easter morning we may rejoice together. The Passion reading was the sermon. And I remind you that the Old prayer book talked about reading, marking, and inwardly digesting, inwardly digesting the gospel, the good news. So instead of a three-point sermon this morning, I'm going to give you a one-point homily, which is not going to last more than a couple of minutes. And I'm taking the text from the epistle. And the epistle, as you listen to it being read, ended with the part about God giving Jesus a name. We all know and love that hymn, at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, every tongue confess him, king of glory now, tis the Father's pleasure we should call him Lord, who from the beginning was the mighty word. At the name of Jesus. Now, a lot of people, especially many Protestants, who call God Jehovah instead of Yahweh because they really are ignorant of the Bible, they think the name of, that we're supposed to bow is Jesus. And they'll all bow when we say Jesus' name. That's not the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is Kyrios. Kyrios. Lord. Lord. That we should call him Lord. Reading that reminded me of something from my youth. When I was a choir boy and acolyte at St. Michael and All Angels, and the Reverend Father Don Frank Fenn was the rector, in talking with Dr. Fenn and confessing to him and telling him what some of my struggles were with life, I'll always remember that he would reply to me almost every time with something like this, the Lord that I serve was taken by wicked men and killed because they didn't like what he had to say. And the Lord that I serve was vindicated by his father and raised from the dead to give us all hope. So I want you to carry with you today that phrase, the Lord that I serve. That name of Jesus, the Kyrios, the Greek word, the Lord, the Kyrios that I serve. And think in your own mind, how many of us, how many of you, how many times can I say that that has been my leading sentence in my life or in your life? Can we really say, the Lord that I serve. Because that's what Christ is. That's what he is to be. He is to be the Lord whom we serve. We are his disciples, his servants. And then not to any president, not to any king on earth, not to any government, not to any 
other power, but only unto the Lord Jesus Christ, who we owe our allegiance. And so I want you to take with you today the thought in your minds and hearts, can I say to myself or to others, the Lord that I serve, We will conclude with the words of the Reverend Dean John Dunn of St. Paul's Cathedral, which he appended at the end of many of his sermons. I leave you in that blessed dependency to hang on him who hangs upon the cross. There bathe in his tears, there suck at his wounds, and lie down in peace in his grave until he vouchsafe you a resurrection and an ascension into that kingdom which he hath purchased for you with the inestimable price of his incorruptible blood. Amen. Continue with the prayers of the people. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishops and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the city of Baltimore, our Charles and Waverly villages, for every city and community, <coughs> let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, or through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those commended to our prayers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us. O Lord, by thy grace, 
Lord, Lord, have mercy. In the communion of Our Lady, Blessed John, the holy angels, and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our Lord. To thee, O Lord, our God. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance or as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. 